perks of working on a Saturday. Hi. Got me some help today. <clears throat> we got our coffee and our sparkling water. And we are headed to our first call. You ready? Yeah. Let's do some work. Like my dad's video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to his channel. Our first call is a no heat on a ductless mini split that I installed a few years back. So this particular one, I have an adapter to where they can use a Nest thermostat. I got a feeling that's kind of creating a problem. Uh, either that or just could be just a dirty filter or dirty coil, but we'll find out when we get there. So here's the condenser. It just kicked on, so let's see if there's any codes. So our LEDs are telling me that everything is in normal operation. Um, red is solid, green is blinking, and yellow is off. Normal operation. Red is solid, green is blinking, yellow is off that you can turn off or take the heat part of that circuit board is not in the heating mode it turns it on it turns it on because it's which has to go through the circuit board but it won't turn the fan on all right so it looks like that circuit board at the indoor unit has failed the customer said they had a power outage for a little while recently, and it seemed like ever since then, uh, it wasn't acting right. The fan was kind of coming on and going off, and so now the fan won't come on at all in the heat mode. Strangely though, it does come on in the cooling mode. So I know the, I know the motor is working fine. Uh, the circuit board is just not giving the, the motor voltage in the heating mode. <laughs> And it's also not showing any codes either. So uh, it being a Saturday, I'm gonna wait till Monday morning to call tech support on that just to verify that uh, it is what I'm thinking it is, a, a faulty circuit board, and then just go from there. And now, me and little guy, Hi. he's super excited. He's, uh, he's a little hangry right now. He needs some food. <laughs> Uh, me and little guy, we are headed to the next job. It's going to be wrapping up a new install where they did a renovation. They added on some, uh, basically a master suite, and I installed a ton and a half train heat pump split. Everything's pretty much done. I just need to go in there and do a little bit of low voltage wiring and drain line, uh, pull vacuum on the system, and start it up. So that's going to be what we're going to be doing for the rest of the day. And as long as we don't get any more calls come in, it should wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. First thing I need to do is get this thing on a vacuum while I'm going up in the attic and finishing everything up. So that way, by the time I get done with that, I'll be ready to start it up and it should be finished. So yeah, this is uh, basically an addition. They have added a pretty good size addition to the house, probably triple the size of the house. And it's mainly just a huge master suite. I think it's gonna be a pretty cool addition when they get done with it. I got this on a vacuum. I'm gonna go inside, finish up what I need to do in the attic. Get on out of here. So that's where I'm going to. It's way over there on the other side of Mars. This looks trippy up here with all this insulation. So 
this is what I'm working with. I've got to finish the drain connections here. Uh, I've got to take the power out, put a Romex connector in there. This duct worked, used to be strapped up, but the insulation guys cut it. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to strap that up and make it look nice. Got to put a wet switch in here. Let's see. Uh, we've got two switches I'm gonna put in. Do a standard wet switch, the hockey puck style. And then I've got a safety switch, a SS2, that I'll put directly on the secondary side there. Wire those up. That should be pretty much all I have to do up here. So on these wet switches, uh, you got 24 volts of power and then you have a set of contacts. The green is common and the orange is normally closed. So uh, the red and the green, which is the common side of the contacts, need to wire together to the 24 volts coming from the transformer. And then we'll break R with the orange We'll also run the secondary switch in series with orange as well. So yeah, I wanted, I wanted to point out on um, uh, my last install video of the Goodman heat pump split system, um, Air Oasis Mechanical HVAC pointed out that I was piping my secondary drain down into the pan and then I was just using the wet switch to cut the unit off. Um, and you know, I, didn't, I wasn't even thinking of this, but he reminded me that, hey, on an air handler, this is under negative pressure, so it's actually pulling air from that. For some reason, my, my brain didn't think of that, so I'm glad he, he pointed that out. So from now on, I'm, I'm gonna be using these instead. That way, because I love the idea of the internal pan not overflowing, and then saturating all the insulation of the air handler itself before, it fills or goes into the pan. I want to be able to cut the unit off before that even happens. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to try these out. I was going to put a union right here to where I can just take the union off in order to be able to remove this panel if need be, but I think I'm going to not glue this on. I'm just going to friction fit it on there um, because water shouldn't be staying in there anyway, and if it does, it should um, trip it and open it up anyway and cut the unit off so i think i'm just going to leave it like that but yeah air oasis thanks dude yeah. oh you know what i need a pvc coupling hey buddy can you give me a, a pvc coupling Hello? Block of quartz and some block of iron. Anybody? Ah. Oh. Do a little bit of cable management here. Get it all nice and tidy. Like a glove? I believe I've got everything. We got our Romex connector in. Our drain line is reconnected. I went ahead and put a union there, so if I ever need to break that loose, I can. Cap is not glued, so we can blow that out if we need to. We got our secondary switch. We got our primary switch, or I should say pan switch. All the wires are looking a lot better down there. <clears throat> I think we're in good shape. I might need to come back and figure out something with this duct to make it look a little bit nicer 
um, and then I really don't like all of this excess stuff on the unit kind of drives me crazy I almost want to come back with I don't know a stiff wire brush maybe not a wire brush but a stiff plastic brush or something try to get at least the majority of it off because I really don't like it but other than that I'm ready to go downstairs and break the vacuum and get this thing charged up bro what's up dude I was needing a coupling where are you at what I thought you were here to help bro I was, I was screaming for a coupling you were nowhere to, where to be found okay, so the vacuum has been off for about good 10 or 15 minutes and we are at 130 microns and holding so I've calculated this line set is 55 feet long and with the train manufacturer's recommendations the factory charge is good for 15 feet in the indoor coil so I have to um, take the, that extra 40 feet <clears throat> and times that 0.6 ounces so that gives me 24 ounces which is a pound and a half so I'm going to break the charge with a pound and a half of R, uh, R410A, open the valves, and we should be good to go. Um, but I will check pressures and whatnot as well. Even in the book, though, it tells you to still come back in the springtime when the outdoor temperature is above 55 degrees to accurately check your superheat and subcooling. So today, I mean, we're, we're probably 40 degrees or a little bit less. But I'm going to go ahead and just break that charge, open the valves, and call it good for right now. All right, so I already bled the air out of the line. We are good to go. Let's zero this guy out. And we're going to add in 24 ounces. Maybe it won't take it all. Can you carry it? Come on. Let me see you carry it. You got it. Yeah. 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 Maybe next year? Yeah. All right. All right, now we're working with some grease here. Grease? Some grease. Some grease. Yeah. All right, so air is purged. We need eight ounces. Everything's on. Let's just throttle that in just a tad bit, like so. There we go. Let's get that to eight ounces. We should be golden. Blam! You did it, dude. You did it. Me? Yeah, you did it. All right, charge is in. How about I bring it over here so you can see it better? Hey man, what kind of refrigerant is that? Fourteen, fourteen, dude. So that discharge pressure seemed a little high to me before. So I went and checked the indoor filters, and they were plugged. So I removed them, and now pressures are starting to drop. Because looking at this, the pressure curves, basically it, it's about 35, 38 degrees outside and 70 degrees inside. So that gives us closer to, uh, you know, 300 PSI on the discharge. So I want to see after it runs for a few minutes where it gets down to. We've, we've already dropped almost 50 PSI. So I think we're going to be looking pretty good. So the pressures went down to about 340 psi not quite as low as i want to see them right now but it being a saturday and got my boy with me i'm not going to spend too much time on it it's not pressing so i'm gonna let it ride for now come back later in the week and do a proper startup but i hope you guys enjoyed the video it was fun me and my boy had a good time yeah had some good laughs 
as always i really appreciate you guys watching thanks for the support and uh, we'll see you on the next one Bye -bye, Dad.